Today, I am going to explain the story of episode 6 of season 1 of Mayfair Witches. If you haven't seen the last 5 episodes, then the link will be found in the description. At the beginning of episode 6, we're shown a scene from 1681 Scotland. Suzanne and her sister are eating food but only then do some people come here. They take Suzanne away from her, because these people think that she uses black magic instead of medicines to cure people and that she is a witch. In the present, we see a boy named Keith. He is listening to a man's speech. The man who is giving the speech is named Arlo. This man is speaking about witches and doing evil. Keith opens his fridge and inside a jar is Deirdre's heart. He clicks many photos and shares them on the internet. Rowan is sleeping next to Cyprian in the normal world, and when she wakes up, she finds Lasher by her bed. She asks him to leave. He says I'm always with you. I'm a part of you. As she is angrily eating what we assume is some cold pasta. Then Lasher lights the candle. Now she starts liking that cold pasta very much. He encourages Rowan to touch the fire. As she touches a candle she finds that she can carry fire in her hands. At that precise moment, Cyprian wakes up and asks her what are you doing. He asks if Lasher is here. But Rowan tells a lie that he is not here. Cyprian can feel him and he is somewhere here. He says I don't understand how he's getting in with all the protection on this place. Then he sees the necklace around Rowan's neck. He understands that he has come here with its help. He takes off the necklace and says that I will deposit it in Talamasca. But then Rowan snatches that necklace from him and says this necklace is mine. I will not give it to anyone. But after a while, she calms down and apologizes and says he is in my head. He won't leave me alone. Then she hand over to him. The next day, Tessa comes to visit Rowan. She shows the troll photo of Deirdre's heart. She tells that it's Deirdre's heart. This is a group that posts about witches. We have to do something. Rowan sees Lasher in the window glass as if he is inside her. Tessa says it is all a matter of our family and we don't have the option to walk away. When they come for us, we have to stand and fight or they'll destroy us. Rowan asks if it is so important then where are the other family members? She says the family members are not taking it seriously. I thought you might take it. But Rowan does not take this thing very seriously. Tessa tells about her witch power, that she can put a man under a trance for a few minutes so they can't think straight. But you have a real power right at your fingertips. Rowan advises her not to get involved in all these things and live her life normally. Later, Rowan visits her uncle Cortland and asks him to help her get rid of Lasher. Cortland is still adamant that Lasher exists for Rowan to make use of, and trying to lose him is a waste of time. Between the conversation with her medical intuition, Rowan deduces that Cortland's ALS has progressed quite far. She asks him whether he has started cell therapy, and he requests that she keep his condition a secret for the time being. Rowan agrees, but when she compares his wanting to get rid of ALS to her wanting to lose Lasher, he agrees to help her. He tells her that Lasher can't be gotten rid of, he can just be transferred. As had previously been done from Catherine Mayfair to his father, and Cortland's cousin, Dally Jean, might know more about it. Then we see Cyprian who has brought the necklace to Talamasca. Now he's trying to find out what Mayfair House has to do with the necklace. And why is Lasher visible only to the Mayfair witches? Then he takes this necklace in his hand. He is transported back to the 1600s, where he finds that Suzanne is being tried for witchcraft. And when she appeals to the people to show sense and mercy, they decide to lock her in a cage and put her through the test of water. We assume that means that she will be drowned. If she survives, God has saved an innocent, and if she dies, she gets her just desserts for being a witch. At present, Cortland contacts Dolly Jean, and when he explains the entire situation, she reminds him of the risks associated with it. They agree that they will let Rowan know of the situation and let her decide for herself. Cortland shows her Deirdre's hair that he cut at the funeral. Rowan arrives at Mayfair House with Jojo, where she meets Dolly Jean. She tells that with this ritual Lasher will be transferred to another Mayfair. But there will be a lot of risk in this thing are you ready to take this risk? Rowan asks how can I be at risk? She says I don't know this either. Maybe it will affect your medical carrier. But Rowan decides, as she should, that her medical ability is the result of her own hard work and not brought on by some supernatural entity. Then she brings her to a room where she finds a box. Inside that box, 
there is a small doll that has all the designee's body parts in it. And this whole ritual is to be done with this doll only. She also gives Deirdre's hair which she tells her to braid. Meanwhile, Keith has approached a group of modern-day witch hunters, where Arlo is giving a speech. He's talking about Polly Jenkins who got burned alive last night. He says that Polly had made a deal with Devil, and she was a witch. We will not allow women like these to rule us, and we have to eliminate them. After the speech is over, Keith meets Arlo, and he presents them with Deirdre's heart, which catapults him to become an important member of their next mission, trapping the Mayfairs. Arlo starts showing it to everyone saying that we have a witch's heart. All the witches have gathered at Mayfair House and they begin the ritual. First of all, she takes the names of the twelve designees and starts kissing the dolls one by one. Then in the past knowing the horror that was about to come her way, Suzanne had no other choice but to start reciting the chant. She had been taught previously by a real witch. Because of this storms and storms come here and houses catch fire here. Everyone starts running from here. Rowan is also reciting the same chant in the present. All the witches with her are reciting the chant. Then something happens here and things start to shake. The color of Rowan's eyes changes to white. She sits down and vomits out the necklace, which is what binds Lasher to her. This is the same necklace that Cyprian is touching and seeing the vision of 1681. But now this necklace has come to her. Dolly takes this necklace to each of the Mayfair witches, to know that he has chosen someone. Tessa is chosen for this. Everyone is happy that the necklace has selected her. She is glad to relinquish Lasher. Back to Suzanne, there's fire all around her. That is when Lasher materializes and saves her from the village. The necklace is from the man leading the execution, and the key is to the cage Suzanne was locked in. That is the symbolism of the necklace, that it is a liberating tool for the wearer. Cyprian, who has been a witness to the entire thing, is knocked out and his consciousness is trapped in this timeline. Suzanne breaks free and asks Lasher if she is a witch. Then he says you are my witch. You will have all that you desire. And in return, you are bound to fulfill an ancient prophecy. Tessa DMs Keith to visit him. She tries to attract him with her powers. But by then Arlo comes from behind and he comes to know that Tessa is a Mayfair witch. She now calls for Lasher with reciting the chant, but he does not come, and then Arlo catches her. With this, episode 6 ends here. If you like this video then please like it. Subscribe to this channel as well. And if you like my work, then you can support me by donating on thanks. Thanks for watching.